Hello friends, now in the previous video we spoke about hypothyroidism in pregnancy. Let's talk about hyperthyroidism in pregnancy. The most common cause is Graves disease where there are thyroid stimulating autoantibodies in circulation and they drive increased production or increased stimulation of thyroid gland leading to excess production of the thyroid hormones, a situation which we also call as thyrotoxicosis right now the problem occurs when there is untreated thyrotoxicosis during pregnancy there is increased risk of miscarriage preeclampsia fetal growth restriction low birth weight increased risk of preterm delivery even stillbirth and as well as increased risk of maternal heart failure with this prolonged untreated thyrotoxicosis with um, excessive uh, uh, heart rate in the mother tachycardia with subsequent cardiac myopathy you know there can be cardiac discompensation and increased risk of maternal heart failure also now with Graves disease where maternal autoantibodies are present in circulation there can be very distinct type of effects to the fetus as well right so the maternal autoantibodies which are thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins right they can cross the placenta okay these are thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins these are autoantibodies against the TSH receptor of the stimulating type. So they can cross the placenta, reach the fetus and they can cause a stimulation of the fetal thyroid gland. So they can lead to fetal thyroid toxicosis, fetal thyroid toxicosis. And that can trigger fetal heart failure that may trigger fetal hydrops that may trigger till birth under the kind of fetal involvement could be that the mother is on anti-thyroid drugs for treatment and these drugs can cross the placenta and then they can cause goitrous hypothyroidism in the fetus right now that doesn't mean that one should not treat maternal hyperthyroidism or graves disease with the use of antithyroid drugs right that does not mean that because the risk is less the risk is very less the advantages of using the treatment are more as compared to the risks involved and these risks are also there when we are using excess dosage okay so let's say we are not titrating the tsh values and we are not titrating the dosage of the drugs during pregnancy and we happen to give more dosage as requ than required we are over treating maybe we end up over treating then these risks are more likely and then the third thing that can happen is sometimes maternal TSH receptor blocking antibodies a different types of antibodies blocking antibodies can cross the placenta and reach the fetus to cause non goitrous fetal hypothyroidism right so like I told you in thyroid physiology that goiter happens when there is excessive TSH stimulation on the, th on the thyroid gland now here hypothyroidism is happening because of TSH receptor blocking antibodies which happen to reach the fetus so there is not excess TSH the receptor is getting blocked so that's why non goitrous fetal hypothyroid now how will you suspect hyperthyroidism in a woman who is pregnant without any clear-cut prior history so your symptoms will help you yes and keep in mind two important aspects of the symptoms there is anyways tachycardia during pregnancy but if there is tachycardia even on waking up in the morning 
that is very significant right if there is failure to gain weight despite eating despite any other obvious reason unexplained failure to get, gain weight during pregnancy you should suspect hyperthyroidism in pregnancy now sometimes in women with hyper MSS that is associated with excessive beta HCG right there can be clinically a state of transient hyperthyroidism okay where the woman is having symptoms of hyperthyroidism like palpitations like fatigue or maybe like excessive increased in heart rate right so transient hyperthyroidism can be there at these times and usually because it's transient it doesn't require treatment uh, of any kind with any drugs except when there are symptoms plus lab confirmation then only one should be treating otherwise not routinely it is required so lab confirmation should be there now there are various aspects to treatment of uh, hyperthyroidism and graves disease which you read up in medicine endocrinology and pharmacology now to discuss all those in detail would be beyond the scope of this video so i will highlight the important points regarding the treatment during pregnancy so subclinical hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism where there are normal t4 and t3 levels but low serum tsh levels that's the only problem no treatment with drugs or anything is required now when we talk about clinical hyperthyroidism on the other hand elevated free hormone levels and low tsh levels then yes of course treatment is required now regarding the treatment modalities please remember that yes there are various types of treatment modalities for hyperthyroidism drugs radio iodine even surgery right so radio iodine is something that is absolutely contraindicated because it will lead to harmful effects in the fetus also it will lead to fetal thyroid gland ablation also so this is absolutely contraindicated during pregnancy thyroid surgery if required can be done for the mother in the second trimester right but preference is definitely given to the medical treatment first so in the first trimester the drug that is recommended is propyl thiouracil ptu that we say okay now please remember that outside of pregnancy okay methimazole is considered a better drug for treatment of hyperthyroidism it is better at bringing control right and there is also a uh, hepatotoxicity associated with uh, propyl thiouracil so outside of pregnancy methimazole is definitely considered a better drug but during pregnancy in the first trimester propyl thiouracil is a drug of choice because methimazole is teratogenic okay one specific fetal defect it is associated with is fetal aplasia cutis a skin disorder okay now in the second and third trimester however in the second and third trimester however methimazole can be used for better control of thyroid hormone levels okay and because of the hepatotoxicity associated with propyl thiouracil many clinicians favor the use of methimazole in the second and third trimester however there is also no harm in continuing with propyl thiouracil in the second and third trimester as well okay but please remember that in the first trimester it's definitely propyl thiouracil and not methimazole so these are some of the important aspects regarding treatment of hyperthyroidism during pregnancy now after delivery let's say in a breastfeeding woman 
antithyroid drugs gets concentrated in the breast milk also so if you have to use one drug in the breastfeeding mother it should be propyl thyrosine if the woman is breastfeeding then the drug that is preferred preferably propyl thiouracil you will have to weigh the risks versus benefit the risks of propyl thiouracil also you will have to see the woman's liver function tests also but if breastfeeding is being done by the woman preferably put propyl thiouracil it gets less concentrated in breast milk as compared to methimazole so that should be the preference but one can one will have to weigh the risks versus benefits so with this i finished the video a very basic video on hyperthyroidism in pregnancy i hope you found this video useful